one shot, or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment. Did you capture it? I'd like to welcome all of you to COD's webinar interview and personally like to thank Dr. Terry Schroeder for taking time out of his busy personal schedule to be with us. Um, I have a few questions. Okay. All right. Thanks. How did you get into chiropractic? Well, my dad was a chiropractor and uh, his dad was a chiropractor too. And basically my dad's office was our home. And through childhood, we saw many, many people come into the, our house, to my dad's office, and um, my brother and I would, would sit kind of in that makeshift waiting room and just watch people who could barely get into the office on their own. They sometimes had to be helped in, and oftentimes they'd come out of the office, that little room with my dad, <coughs> laughing and, you know, standing upright, and um, my brother and I honestly thought my dad was some sort of miracle man. I mean, we, we just... We really didn't know what he was doing in that room. I mean, we, we had been adjusted and stuff, but um, it was just, uh, you know, amazing to watch what was happening and, and how many changes in people's lives he was making. So, uh, both my brother and I and my sister all became chiropractors and uh, followed in Dad's footsteps. Wow. What did you find as the biggest challenges in starting your own practice? I think the biggest challenge for me in starting my own practice was just being patient. Um, <clears throat> I was still actually competing with our Olympic team at the time, and I was still training really hard and trying to balance out training and, and preparing for the Olympic Games and starting to practice. So, you know, just really being patient and um, understanding that it was going to take a while to build a good, healthy practice. Uh, you know, I was excited to get out of school, I was excited to get my hands on patients, um, but, you know, it certainly wasn't uh, a big, booming practice right in the beginning. It took some time to build, and I think that's the hardest part, just kind of being patient and, and knowing that it's, it's going to happen if you really believe it's going to happen. How did you integrate and market yourself while starting a new practice? You know, I think one of the biggest factors in... Um, <clears throat> kind of marketing yourself is just getting out in the community and, and getting to know people. Um, this is this is a business about people and about helping people and it's about relationships and uh, when people um, get to know you hopefully they, they get to know you as a good sincere person who is interested in helping them and the more people that feel that way in the community obviously the better off you are. So. Um, not a lot of advertising, just really getting out there and meeting people and, you know, um, talking in front of groups. I think um, if you're comfortable in talking in front of groups, getting out there and, and talking to sports teams or talking to um, uh, senior groups, uh, whatever it is, and, and telling them, you know, who you are and what you're about and, and the benefits of chiropractic care and, uh, and then planting seeds, you know, planting seeds out there in the community and, and watching them grow. Um, this is a twofold question. Do you take insurance, uh, cash only, or do you both? And what are some of the advantages or disadvantages of payment method that you take in your office? We, we do both cash and insurance, uh, and we've done that for a long time, and we try to, be, we try to accommodate our patients. Uh, certainly there's a lot of advantages, I think, to a cash practice where you don't have to do all the um, paperwork. You know, the insurance companies are asking us more and more to write more reports and to do more paperwork, and uh, it's cleaner, it's easier, you know, in a cash-based practice. Although you may limit some people, you know, as far as how much they come in. Um, but I think with a cash practice, you're also able to, um, you know, to some degree more determine that level of care that somebody needs and, and set up wellness plans. Whereas, you know, insurance obviously doesn't want to pay for maintenance and wellness and uh, they've kind of got it backwards. But um, so there's, there's some pros and cons for both, but, um, you know, in our practice we've tried to accommodate our patients and, and help them out and, you know, uh, however we can. And what makes your practice unique, um, if there's a specialty in your practice? And 
if a patient were to choose between you and other chiropractors in town, why would they choose you? Well, I would like to think that our, our practice or my practice is unique um, because we, we've set up basically a family practice and we have a real family atmosphere. Our staff, I think, feels like they're part of the family and they feel like it's not really a job, it's um, they're part of helping these patients get better. Uh, so I think that, as I said before, it's really a people business and I think what sets you know, a practice apart from anybody else is kind of the level of, of care and the and sincerity they have for their patients. Uh, when somebody comes into a room, you know, I like to look them in the eye and really make contact with them and, and really show them and help them feel that I really care about them and I want to help them and I'm going to do whatever I can to help them get better um, and connect with them. So, um, you know, we I enjoy treating kids, I enjoy treating elderly people, uh, that's what kind of the fun of chiropractic is, is you can, you can help people when they're babies and you can help people in their 90s and uh, you see, still see amazing changes in, in people's bodies and, and their health. Um, so, you know, I, th I think having a passion, you know, for, for what I do and, and loving chiropractic and, and believing in chiropractic 100% is, is a big part of uh, patients having confidence in me too. They know that uh, I feel that chiropractic is the best thing for them, that they're in the right place. I, you know, when they walk in this office, I'm going to do my best to help them, and, and chiropractic is going to be that vehicle that's going to help them get better. And do you use rehab in your office? And if so, what types of machines do you use? Yeah, we, we use some rehab. We, um, we have ultrasound, we have muscle stimulation. Um, you know, one of our new doctors, Dr. Kyle Knox, is uh, very involved with sports chiropractic and uses Graston and, and a little bit of ART. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we, we do soft tissue, we have massage therapists, um, and we actually have a physical therapist in the office too that we refer to directly and uh, when somebody needs a little bit more rehab or they need a little bit more um, exercise to you know, build some stability. So we, we try to um, offer our patients a lot of different options and you know, I find that the therapies oftentimes are supportive of what we do as chiropractors. Um, my number one priority is to be the best adjuster I can be, and that adjustment is the most important thing that I do for my patient. Um, and the therapy just supports that, really. Okay. The period of time in your career as a world-class athlete, in many respects, mirrored a period of time during which the field of sports chiropractic took a quantum leap in utilization and acceptance. Can you provide some then and now perspective reflecting on the presence of chiropractic at your early Olympic experiences to what you saw when you coached the U.S. men's team at the 08 Summer Games in China? That's a great question. <clears throat> yeah, I can definitely provide some good perspective on that. My first Olympic team was 1980, and uh, chiropractic was just really getting introduced into the Olympic circle. There were some um, pioneers of uh, chiropractic, uh, Dr. Goodhart, uh, Dr. Leroy Perry, who were just starting to work with some athletes and some teams, and um, <clears throat> there was no official chiropractor of the U.S. team in 1980. We ended up boycotting, so we never got a chance to go. Uh, 1984 was the first time that the Team USA had an official chiropractor as part of their staff, and from that point it's grown tremendously to um, 2008, fast forward 2008 in Beijing, where uh, Dr. Mike Reed, who's a chiropractor, is actually the medical director for the USOC. Uh, I think there was five official chiropractors on the United States Olympic team staff, and many of the teams had their own chiropractors traveling with them. Uh, volleyball had a manager who was a chiropractor, and judo had a you know somebody on staff who was a chiropractor. Uh, so it just it, there's a lot of chiropractors around, and the athletes certainly know that it's helping to give them that edge. Uh, and those athletes are looking for whatever little edge they can get to, um, you know, be at their best, perform at their best, and potentially win a Olympic medal. Okay. How do you manage time between your practice and coaching the U.S. water polo team? Another good question. It's um, yeah, time is definitely a balancing act. Um, 
I think the biggest key for me is to stay in the present moment. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, a great friend of mine who was one of the world-class athletes himself, Karch Karai, was a volleyball player, and he had a great quote once that uh, he was asked how he prepared for the Olympic gold medal. And he said, you know what, I never prepared for the Olympic gold medal, I prepared for the next play. And, and I think that's just such a great statement to stay in, in that present moment. Uh, you know, when I come into my office, uh, I have to 100% have my chiropractor hat on. And each and every adjustment I give is 100% in that present moment. You know, I want it to be my best adjustment of the day. Uh, and when I leave my office, you know, hopefully I can leave um, and go to the pool and be on the pool deck and 100% be a coach and not have all these other things you know, rattling through my mind. I mean, it, it really is about staying in the moment. And, and for me, I mean, the other important piece of that is obviously my family. Um, it, um, you know, they're, they're huge. Uh, number one priority. Uh, you can see on the computer we have this logo, it's Live in Alignment. Uh, and it's a, a term that we had um, trademarked. Because uh, to me, it's perfect for chiropractic. Obviously, we, we want our patients and we want ourselves to live in alignment. But uh, to me, it encompasses so much more. It encompasses um, you know, your spiritual life and your belief in God. Uh, it encompasses your relationships with your wife, with your family. Um, it encompasses exercise and diet and rest. And, and if any of these areas are out of balance, um, you know, you're going to be rolling along with a flat tire and be in trouble. Uh, and it certainly encompasses having a, um, a good spine, a healthy spine that keeps your nervous system healthy and um, keeps you in balance. If you were to give advice to a chiropractic student right now, what would it be? You're in a great career. You're in a great career path. Um, you know, uh, there are so many people out there that still need chiropractic, and we are still. Uh, in many ways at the base camp, you know, looking up at the summit as to how far this profession can go. And, uh, you know, each and every day I'm so thankful that I'm a chiropractor. It's a, a great profession where you get a chance to help people every day and you get rewarded. I mean, people come in and they hug you and they, you know, tell you thank you so much for, for helping me get out of that pain and for helping me learn to eat better, live better, exercise better. It, um, it's an incredible career, and uh, you're going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Lastly, when talking about everyday practice, how important is positive energy for you and your employees during patient interaction? Uh, positive energy is is huge. Um, you know, from the moment a person picks up the phone, a patient can tell. You know, if a staff member. Uh, is not in a good mood, you know, if they're not 100% with that patient, if they're not happy and passionate about their job. Uh, that front desk person is uh, huge for the practice, it, it just makes such a big difference. And, um, and my energy as a chiropractor is uh, a big part of, I think, um, the overall feel in the office. You know, if I'm off, my staff's going to be off. In a way, you as the chiropractor have to be the leader, you have to be the team leader, and you have to help. Um, not necessarily be so much a cheerleader, but you have to lead by example. And I think, you know, a calm, healthy, healing attitude and positive energy is going to go a long ways to helping people feel and believe that, you know, they're in a good place um, themselves. Uh, uh, not only staff, but patients and, and everybody that walks through that door. I want them to feel like, you know, this is a good place for you to be. This is the right place for you to be. And, you know, we all believe the chiropractic and what we do here is going to help you when you walk in that door. So that positive energy is, um, is really a huge factor in having a successful practice. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.